Hey guys, it's Christopher and welcome to another Solaris tutorial. In this video we are going to talk about timers. Timers allow you to execute some um, code um, after some delay in the future. So this is very very useful, especially for enemies. Um, but uh, as a first example, let's Imagine uh, um, this room with a switch and we will simply play a sound when the player presses the switch but after a delay say of 5 seconds. So how do we do this? Uh, I have to give a name to the switch. Timer switch will be better. So if you remember the tutorial about switches there is the unactivated event so without timer you would do sol audio play sound for example secret okay but how do we introduce some delay we will use a timer and you can see the documentation of timers here in the timers section with a lot of very simple example and actually this is the example we want <laughs> the main function of timers is sol timer start it takes three parameters uh, where is my quest editor Okay. Okay, sorry, I'm back. So, timer start. Um, three parameters. The first one is optional, the context. I will explain just after this very first example. But the delay and the function you want to execute later. Oh. Okay. Um, so, we set a delay of five seconds. The delay is is in milliseconds, so five thousand five thousand milliseconds, and the code will be well actually this line here. Okay, so you pass a value of type function to this function. You pass a callback parameter, so it's exactly the same idea as um, some a few other functions we saw in previous tutorials for example in movements when you start a movement you can also pass an optional function to be called later when the function um, when the movement finishes and same thing for dialogues when you start a dialogue you can pass a, a function to be called when the dialogue ends, so later. So it's still the same principle here. Let's try. <coughs> and now we wait five seconds. Okay, so it worked. But now there is an, a question that should uh, I mean, potential a potential problem. What happens if I leave the map before the end of the timer? Actually, nothing. The timer was automatically cancelled when I left the map, and this is because remember the context parameter. Actually, the context parameter specifies the maximum lifetime of the timer. So you can limit the life of the timer to a lot of things actually, but by default if you don't specify it, it's the map. The default context is set for you, the current map, during a game. 
because when when no game is running it's not really possible of course for example if you make a timer to script your some animation in your title screen or something like that it's uh, you can also use timer use timers outside a game most uses of timers will be for enemies um, so yeah, the the default context is the map when a game is running. But if I put some other context, for example, the game, well then it's not the same story. The same game is still running, so the timer is still running too. Okay, and um, if I had a way to restart the game, uh, for example, if I had game over, then the timer would be stopped because the context is the game. And if you want really a global timer, you can also put sol.main here, which represents the global, the whole execution of the of the process of the Solaris quest. Okay? So, by default, the map. And when you make enemy, enemy timers, usually you will want to set the context to the enemy itself, so that if the enemy dies in the meantime, the timer uh, silently stops. Okay? <laughs> Sorry. Um, and you can also repeat a timer by simply returning true, actually. So let's repeat it, with, but with another delay. Smaller delay. So I always return true here, so it will repeat forever. Okay, until the timer is stopped for some other reason, like here, the context of the timer just finished the map. Um, okay, and back to the documentation. Um, Sol.timer.start also returns a value, it returns a value of type timer. Most of the time you don't need to store the return value into a variable, but if you do, you can use this feature then. You can suspend and suspend a timer and get some information like how much time is remaining, stuff like that. You can also decide if the timer should be automatically uh, suspended when the map gets suspended because by default it's true. Did I really close the editor? I don't know if I have, a, I have a problem here. Anyway, timers. If I pause the game, the timer stops. It's it is suspended because automatically suspended when the game is suspended, and the dialog box, also just pausing the game, are. Uh, things that suspend the game so and when I come back and the game is no longer suspended the timer continues okay so if you don't want to suspend the timer during the the dialogue you can do this set suspended with map oops false And now it continues, even when the map is suspended. Alright. Um, let's remove this. Okay. Maybe we should do a second example. Um, oh wait, no. I also want to show you how to repeat a timer only three times. 
for example, three times instead of forever like this. So what you can do is it make a counter timer count initially zero and you increment it in the t function of a timer and you return true three times so you return false when the timer counts is three okay <laughs> return true if the timer counts is is uh, one two actually one two or three yes should be okay like this uh, we heard it four times mm, <laughs> okay yes yes of course it was uh, lower Strictly lower because it starts at, ze at zero here. Okay. Maybe it's easier to write it like this if timer count is um, greater or equal to three, return false. Or maybe even I think it's it's easier this way. And if you if you return nothing, it's the same as returning false. Okay, yeah, I think it's easier to understand like this. If I haven't played this. Uh, if I haven't played the sound th three times yet, I continue. I repeat the timer. Okay, let's make ma let's make a second example. Um, if you saw the chapter about dynamic tiles, let's go back to this map. Dynamic tiles pool so there is a switch to, to remove the water here but we would like to remove it gradually with time so to do this what we can do is actually make several several dynamic tiles successive dynamic tiles. Initially only this one is enabled so I un I just unchecked this and I make more tiles make with copy paste okay so I have five tiles five dynamic tiles and my script will um, enabled enable each one of them gradually ladder switch <laughs> should be called water switch okay so how do we do this water tile 1 set enabled false water tile 2 set enabled true and then a timer with say half second delay indensis with tabulation then I disable the, s the second one and I enable the third one and then I just continue Three, four, four, five, and and and. <laughs> so we have a lot of 
um, nested callbacks here but we'll see how to make the code the code much cleaner let's see if it works I forgot to remove the last one we need another timer <laughs> we need one more it's the last one I promise okay does it work like this? Okay. Great. But um, how to uh, to make the code more more uh, generic and cleaner? To do this, you can actually re remove all of this. Water index, and we start with the first one. So, I would like to compute dynamically the name of this variable. So, I want the the entity whose name is water tile and concatenated with this value. So, to to do this, I need um, I need to use the function map can get entity I can't directly access access it from a variable here because the name is is also computed dynamically I can just type the name of a variable but instead I do this I need both I need the the previous and the next tile Water index plus one. <coughs> I need to increment the index. Um, then previous style set enabled. It will be slightly different from what I did there because uh, before maybe you noticed. I immediately disabled uh, the first and enabled the second one but this time uh, I, there will be the, the delay first but it will be <laughs> it will almost not be noticeable previous style set enabled false and if there is no next style okay because this function return nil returns nil oops I forgot parenthesis if there is no such entity no entity with this name so then return false it means that we have finished okay and if it's not nil we enable it and wait on true to disable it next time and uh, I forgot the word return okay guess I think it should work oops something wrong here line 38 I forgot to close yes sol.timer.start is not closed and 
and it works! Nice. So this code is much more adaptive. It can basically work on any map that has tiles named like this. So you could put it in a separate file and make it more re re make it um, re reusable. Okay, and it works no matter the number of intermediate steps here. If I add another one with the, the suffix six, okay, it's no longer ha hard coded how many steps I had. So. It just works. <coughs> and don't forget that um, you don't have. You you can put this function, give the, uh, give a name to this function if you want. Or maybe remove water. If you don't like the 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 syntax with anonymous functions. By the way, I can reindent by blocks like this. Local function, remove water. So this defines a function with name remove water. In other words, a variable of type function local to this file. Oops. I forgot to also move this outside. <coughs> okay, still the same result. Uh, yeah, so this is everything I wanted to say about timers. You can check the documentation for more information, but most important stuff is to really understand the notion of context. By default, timers are limited to the current map, but you can change the context. It's the optional first parameter. You can limit the lifetime of your timer by the map, the game, an enemy, or whatever. And to repeat a timer, just return true. And then when you have finished, just return false. Um, yeah. So, and when you re you repeat a timer, it will be repeated with with the same delay as how it was created. But um, you can actually modify the delay with set remaining time. Okay. Um, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and see you next time. Bye.